winter's hit with a vengeance, winter feeding, major yeah. minefield. Yeah, it comes with a few issues potentially um, and needs to be thought about. I guess um, it's not just a, a simple matter of um, having winter feed there. I think farmers or people using winter feed mechanisms, they've got to, they've got to have in mind appropriate ways of feeding and mitigating risks and they do come with risks and there's a number of them, particularly with the brassica crops very traditional risks getting a little bit better these days with more modern cultivars but nevertheless we still have to bear in mind a number of a number of issues obviously nitrate poisoning is one nitrate would be the number one because we still see quite a bit of it um, and these plants do tend to take up quite a bit of nitrate from the soil um, so when we've got um if, if there's been fertilizer applied recently um, even to pasture classic pasture species it's always worth um, keeping that in <coughs> mind as far as nitrogen uptake to the plant particularly uh, the big risk periods are particularly so after uh, frosted frosted weather or uh, a, a period of grey murky kind of weather where there's been minimal growth rates we've so had a fair bit of that exactly so the nitrate gets taken up by the plant and because of the the slower growth rates it's concentrated in a, in a small area of the leaf or the stalk and so once we get a, then get the following boost we get the ends of those those tips of those plants with very very high nitrate levels so it's a very very good strategy to keep nitrate poisoning in mind as far as a risk and test for it and there are many um, paddock size tests paddock side tests available these days consult with your veterinarian They'll keep you on the straight and narrow. Um, there's varying levels of testing. Most veterinary clinics will do it for you themselves, or if we need really um, <coughs> very, very accurate levels, then of course samples can go off to the to the lab to test for. Um, if you're caught short and you find that we've got symptoms, which I'll, I'll go over those symptoms now. So basically, nitrate poisoning results in a problem where the haemoglobin and the blood can't transport oxygen so the symptoms we see are akin to asphyxiation not not being able to breathe properly because the oxygen can't get around the body so we get animals that are blowing heavily exercise intolerant can't walk very long without really really blowing and in latter stages collapse anyone who's very astute if you look at the color of these animals look at their mucous membranes in their eyes or in their mouth they turn a kind of a muddy brown sort of color rather than the p nice pink color that they should be um, if you start seeing those minor symptoms obviously get them off the crop it doesn't mean the crops wasted but we need to look at strategies of feeding that crop safely and that might mean putting them onto the crop after they've had a belly full of hay for instance um, or straw, making sure the straw or hay available and potentially just break feeding for a few hours a day so we can still make use of the crop without them really hoeing into it and getting large toxic doses. Because there's nothing you can do to the crop is there? Nothing you can do to the crop, very very valuable animals, there <coughs> is a treatment that we can reverse the, the changes in the blood but it's expensive and it's very intensive and so that would generally be reserved to to, to very very valuable valuable animals, stud bulls, things like that. <coughs> You're pushing on on brassicas, but you also yeah. mentioned a passing grass. Yep. So grass species do have a problem with nitrates in particular. Ryegrass is well recognised as being high risk for nitrate poisoning under the right conditions. Um, and of course, as far as winter feed goes, we've got to th think about preserved pastures such as silage um, is the classic and baleage and if that preserving process hasn't been undertaken correctly which involves a pickling process really so mm. in other words acidifying or getting the pH very low in those those preserved products if that pickling hasn't occurred properly and we get a higher pH or not as acidic uh, a preserved feed as we as we'd like that again comes with its own risks including mold growth but very classically the classic disease for poorly preserved silage is listeriosis which is a bacterial condition that our animals can can get there's two major issues um, major symptoms with those we can get cerebral or brain related listeriosis and it's classically called circling disease so the bug gets in through breaks in the mouth and the gums in the mouth and ascends up the nerves of the brain and we get an animal that typically will circle and circle and circle and has a very high fever 
Um, in recent years, we've seen an, a number of cases of what we call enteric listeriosis, where we get a diarrhea disease. Um, typically, sheep are the, are the highest risk, but it can be seen in any, in any ruminant animal. So that's very important to ensure if, you're, if you are reliant on pickled or preserved pasture for winter feeding or supplemental feeding, to ensure that that ensiling process has been done correctly.